Hello fellow problem solvers, so they're going to be doing some number theory technique, namely, let's, it says find all primes all p such that these p is a positive integer such that p, p plus 10p plus 14 are all primes, this is part a, part b, part c, part d, all separate, and I invite you to try out every single one of these for the next five minutes. Ideally, don't try for more than 15 minutes per every single one of these. Actually, not more than half an hour. I'll give you this. Not more than half an hour. Because this is just technique building now, okay? So, without further ado, take five minutes, try A. Then take five minutes, try B. Take five minutes, try C. And then D. Okay, now let's begin. And so let's begin with A. What do we have? We have P, P plus 10, and P plus 14 are primes. Okay. So, is P, let's, if we don't know what to do. Let's assume. We're new. We don't know this technique. So is P, e, let's look at primes one by one. So P is equal to, uh, it's prime, no, it doesn't work because uh, this is even, this is 12. Okay, what about 3? Well, 3, 13, 17, yeah, all of them are primes, so P is equal to 3 works. Okay, what about 5? Well, we have 5, then we have, oh, 15 is divisible by 3, it doesn't work. Okay, what about 7? We have 7, 17, yes. 21, uh, oh, that's divisible by 3 again, doesn't work. Okay, what about 11? Okay, we have 11, 21, doesn't work again. 13, 23, we're good. Oh, 27, 3 cubed, we're not good. Do you see a pattern here? I invite you to pause for two minutes and figure out if you can prove anything with this pattern. And here's the next step. You see, namely, if we're taking any prime that's greater than or equal to 5, then what is its remainder when divided by 3? Well, it's either 1 or 2. It can't be 0 because then it will be divisible by 3. And then it's not a prime. So it's either 1 or 0. So if P is congruent to 1 modulo 3, then what do we have? Well, then we have P plus 14 is divisible by 3 and is greater than 3, so it's not a prime. So then P plus 14 fails. However, if P is congruent to 2 modulo 3, then P plus 10 fails. Because then we have 2 plus 10 is 12, which is 0 modulo 3. This is divisible by 3. It's not a prime. And this solves part A. And this is what the technique I want to show you in this problem. Now, solve part B. Take 5 minutes. Do it now. So, what do we have? We have prime. 2 again doesn't work. Evenness. 3, we have 3, 7, 17, p is equal to 3 works, woohoo! So now with that, let's try p is equal to 5, again we see 9 here. So here we'll have, so if p, like similar as here, if p is congruent to 1 modulo 3, then p plus 14 fails. And if it's congruent to 2 modulo 3, then p plus 4 fails. So in either case, if p is not equal to 3, then it's not divisible by 3, then it's either 1 or 2 modulo 3, and then we're done. And with that, let's move on to the next case. P, is p 2, p plus 1, and 4, p plus 1. Now we're getting something different. Wow. What happens here? I invite you, take 5, take 5, actually take 5 to 10 minutes and figure this one out. And here's the next step. So. What do we have here? We have that, let's see what happens when we put in 2. We have 2, 2 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 5, 2 times 4 plus oh, 9 divisible by 3. Will it be the same thing? I don't know. 3, 7, like when you put in p is equal to 3, then we'll have 3, 7, and 13. So p is equal to 3 works. It might just be the same old thing. Let's see, if it's 1 modulo 3, then we'll have this is 2 times 1 plus 1 is 0 modulo 3. If it's 2 modulo 3, this will be 4 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 9 is equal to 0 modulo 3. So again, we have a similar thing as before. And if we are done, p is equal to 3 is the only prime number which works out. And now let's do part D. Again, I invite you to pause for 5 to 10 minutes and try to figure it out. Here's the solution. So we're working with p is, e p is equals 2. We have 2 and 8 times 4 plus 1 is 33 divisible by 3 again. Hmm. Is that going to be a solution? Well, let's see if it is. 
is equal to 3 we have. So this is 8 times 9, which is 72, plus 1 is 73. 73 is not divisible by 3, not divisible by 5. It's a prime. So P is equal to 3 works. And now if P is not congruent to 0 modulo 3, that implies that P squared is congruent to 1 modulo 3. I mean, this is just because then 3 divides P minus 1 times P plus 1. I mean, there's many ways you can go about doing this, but this is one nice way of doing it. And then we have 8p squared, like this implies that 8p squared plus 1 is congruent to 8. This is, we can multiply both sides by 8. Plus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo 3, because this is 9. 9 is 0 modulo 3. And so we are done. So we have shown that in every single one of these cases, p is equal to 3 is the solution. Now, the sort of idea here is that, in general, with primes greater than or equal to 5, you can always write them of the form 6k plus or minus 1. 6 times some k plus or minus 1. Because these are the only options left. A prime can't be of the form 6 times k. Cannot be of the form 6k plus 2, divisible by 2. 6k plus 3 is divisible by 3. 6k plus 4 is divisible by 2. Again, and with that, you can sometimes use this now. Not every number of this form is a prime. And an example of a number that is not prime but is of this form is 25. 25 is 4 times 6 plus 1. It's not a prime. It's 5 squared. So this is just an idea to look at. Look at remainders with primes. Modulo, uh, I haven't mentioned this before, but modulo just means what is the remainder when divisible by 3? When prime is divided by 3, is, it, is the remainder 1? That's what these signs mean. And this solves our little problem here. And as always, thanks for problem solving.